Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about Super Earth and specifically about two things. One is that we've discovered a relatively cool one very very close to our solar system and two is that there's actually just so happens to be a study that recently came out talking about how incredibly awesome these objects could potentially be. Let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and welcome to What The Math. So first question is of course, so what exactly is a super earth and you may already know the answer, but in case you don't, it's basically a super super massive earth like planet. Just like you see right here, this is one of the trappist planets that we are almost certain are super earths. They're kind of for the most part just really similar to earth, but have more mass, more size and thus if you were to stand on the surface would actually have slightly or potentially much higher gravity. It could be as low as just a few percent higher than 1G or it could potentially be up to 3, 4 or even 5Gs. And this creates a very interesting effect and this is actually what the recent study I discovered talks about. Apparently, because of these unusual features, um, super earths seem to have very unusual structure and also material that's present inside of them. Something that we can't really imagine yet and something that we cannot really even scientifically create in the lab. Simply because whenever we try to create conditions similar to the ones inside a super earth, everything we use basically breaks. Now, um, it's all due to pressure and pressure creates such a tremendously extreme conditions on the inside that even the electrons that are usually very close to the proton and the neutron and essentially are inside the atom start being um, influenced by this pressure and change the properties of the material entirely. Now here, uh, the common assumption from the scientists studying this is that this creates all sorts of extreme matter. Essentially things that are superconductive, things that absorb a lot of heat and potentially create tremendous amount of magnetism. So we're not really entirely sure just yet what exactly this does, but we know that when we try to simulate this in a lab using lasers, even for a nanosecond that this material survived, it showed some extreme properties that just don't exist anywhere in our solar system simply because there's nothing like that that has so much pressure here. Because even though, for example, Jupiter has a lot of mass, um, it's just not really that dense and not really that rocky to create these materials. It's for the most part just gas. And so we don't really know what happens inside Jupiter, but we don't really think it's as extreme as it is in super Earths. At the same time, our Earth, regular Earth, just doesn't have enough pressure to create anything similar. The pressures we get here are about 10, at least 10 times less than the pressures inside super Earths, like Proxima C that we recently discovered. And the pressure itself could be anywhere from about 40 million atmospheres to even 100 million or more inside of this object, which essentially creates such a tight environment inside the atom that it condenses everything and turns it into a somewhat unusual material in a sense similar to what happens in white dwarfs as well. And so from what we've discovered, it potentially creates a very unique crystalline structure even in materials like iron and nickel. So the core of the super earth um, potentially is just a gigantic crystal with really, really unusual properties that creates all sorts of physical effects that we don't have here in the solar system. Now this right here is an example of how we normally create these very highly pressurized conditions here on Earth. We use two diamonds and right at their tip, if you squeeze the material really, really hard, it actually reaches super, super high pressures. But if you were to try to create something similar to the super Earth, even the diamonds crack. They cannot possibly sustain these conditions. So we've only been able to create these conditions for nanoseconds. And even in those nanoseconds, we've discovered that these objects are just unique. They're very different from anything we get in the solar system. Now, at the same time, this discovery could potentially explain why so many super Earths seem to actually have much higher heat and warmth than usually predicted on similar planets. And this could be super good news for us as space explorers, because for once, 
This could mean that planets such as, for example, TRAPPIST 1e, f, and g, and also, of course, the recently discovered Proxima c planets, all of which are super Earths, could have conditions that are habitable. They could be warm enough, they could even have liquid water, and maybe even really strong magnetic fields that would protect them from anything dangerous in this particular star system. Now this right here is the simulation of Proxima C that was discovered only a few days ago from when I'm making this video, and this is the closest super Earth to us. And so because we've discovered this object, we now have to study it thoroughly to try to understand what's really happening there. If we actually discover that even at the distance where it's supposed to be cold, this object is actually warm, we need to definitely try to plan a mission here. But there's also a chance that the hypothetical Planet 9 that we're still looking for could also be a super-Earth. We, obviously we haven't found it yet, obviously we don't really know where it is, but because we assume that its mass is about 10 masses of Earth, it also could be something similar to Proxima C. That is, it could be a world that um, is very dense and contains unusual materials similar to those crystals I mentioned that could form inside these really dense objects. Not to mention that these conditions could also change the volcanic activity on the planet, and they could also create um, relatively hospitable conditions for life. So there's a lot of things we are actually excited about when it comes to super-Earths, and now with the recent discovery that most super-Earths also tend to have an inclination that gives them seasons, this allows us to dream about discovering an actual world out there that could potentially be Earth 2.0, even though it might be a little bit more gravitationally inhospitable or slightly stronger, and also potentially have more of everything. More volcanoes, more magnetic field, and of course more unusual effects that we're not used to. But nevertheless, one day we'll hopefully get to visit these worlds, and one day we might even get to settle here. Maybe it's going to be on Planet 9, or maybe it's going to be on Proxima C. Only the future will tell, but until then, we can only dream, right? Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about Super Earths and recent discoveries regarding Super Earths, and a little bit more information about the recently discovered Proxima C as well. On that note, once we learn more, I'll mention it in the next video. So do subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.